Hey, Flumes Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships, where we are doing an upgrade commander build video today on the tier 10 uh, Soviet Russian premium special uh, tier 10 destroyer being the Havarovsk. And this is a fun destroyer. It used to be the tier 10 tech tree destroyer where Old Del Delny was, but then they decided to move uh, Havarovsk and the GK to the armory for coal. And so now she's a very fun coal ship, um, is the word I would have to use. So we're going to look at the modules, upgrades, commander build, uh, some of the armor, and talk a little more about this ship. So let's click on the armor layout. And compared to a lot of shores in the game, Havarosk has so much more going on with her armor scheme compared to most destroyers in the game. Uh, most destroyers in the game, maybe just this traditional 19 millimeter plating all across the entire ship, including deck plating, and then the 13 millimeter superstructure. That is not the case by uh, with Havarosk by any means, where you can even uh, bounce some larger AP shells um, and even non-pins on some HE shells um, from other destroyers in the game. So looking at Havarosk, you have the, the standard 19 millimeter that's kind of scattered throughout, and then you have some of this uh, plating going on, which is not typical by any means for most destroyers in the game. Most destroyers, maybe like, I think Ragnar has like a stronger um, armor belt here in the mid, but you have 50 millimeter plating here, 50 millimeter plating here, and 50 millimeter plating here on the side plating. So this allows you to get away with a lot, especially when you're uh, taking on other enemy destroyers. There are a lot of them are just kind of focusing in the mid area of your ship. So unless they hit your superstructure, that's the only place you're gonna damage. Where a lot of other shores in the game with let's say their 127 millimeter um, or higher guns are simply just going to get non-pins, uh, non-penetrations and shatters when they hit these 50 millimeter plating areas. So you really feel that you are able to get away with a lot. <laughs> I, I think I would say this is, I, I mean, maybe I need to look at Ragnar again and stuff, but I would, to me, this feels like the tankiest destroyer in World of Warships, um, at least that I've played so far. The other really interesting thing is not only does she have 19 millimeter deck plating, but in the midsection of the ship, she has 25 millimeter deck plating. Uh, and that's just not normal uh, for a destroyer by any means, a stretch of the imagination. So you're a tanky destroyer, you get a lot of non-penetrations when you take on other enemy destroyers. So she's a very fun tanky destroyer to play, uh, often leaving enemy destroyers where they're frustrated or maybe they have to switch to like, you know, their armor piercing to shoot uh, your broadside so on and so forth. Um, so let's go ahead and also, I don't think I need to say this, but sometimes I talk about what type of sh destroyer is it that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a torpedo, a uh, hybrid, or a gunboat. This is a gunboat destroyer um, with these, uh, oops, artillery, uh, these eight 130 millimeter guns that just pack a punch uh, and do a lot of damage. And I think we'd also, we didn't mention that you even have a little bit of 50 millimeter plating uh, in the barbet armor, or barbet. So that's uh, that's quite nice, to be honest. All right, so modularized, there's nothing to upgrade. Um, now it's, right now the build we have, we have a 4.2 second reload time. So this would drop um, if we took main battery modification three off and then also another skill off of our commander. So you're, you're gonna see higher if you just picked up the ship. But have no fear, you can get it down uh, to lower. Um, the HE shell damage is 1900, AP shell damage 2600. Uh, your armor scheme, because we have survivability expert, means we're running 26,000 hit points. Otherwise, we'd be closer to I think 22, 23,000. And then with torpedoes, the ET-46 torpedoes. These torpedoes have a two-minute reload time, over two minutes actually, 127 seconds. Only six-kilometer range. Uh, 19,500 damage, so they do hit uh, rather hard. Uh, with a torpedo speed of 53 knots. So these are usually yellow rushing torpedoes or torpedoes you use when you're kiting uh, away. And um, your detectability range on the torpedoes is 0 0.6 kilometers or specifically 0 0.63 kilometers. So these are very, very stealthy torpedoes. Uh, most of the uh, torpedoes in the game can be anywhere from one kilometer detectability up to two kilometer detectability range. And that's why the Yoda line is such a travesty because they're very highly detectable torpedoes. 
Uh, gun fire control system, uh, 13.5. Now, I've built for the gun range. Um, I believe stock gun range is, it's like 11 point something. I've just spaced it uh, in my mind. I can look here. Should be able to pull it up. Concealment, guns. Oh, no, it's over here. Oh, almost there. Almost there. Nah, they don't have it on the article. It's, it's 11 point something. So it's actually not really good because your stock concealment uh, is 9.7 kilometers if you do not do a conceal build, which I've done here in Havrosk. So not a lot of breathing room when you first get the ship. It doesn't look very good once you pick her up until you build into her and build into her commander. So we have 13.5 kilometer range. Propulsion, 45 knots with ceramic flag without, uh, should be 43. So we'll go ahead and take those all down, but we will keep the serum like flag on. Now, in terms of her upgrades, I would recommend the main armaments modification one. This um, reduces the risk of your main body becoming capacitated by negative 20%. Also, risk of torpedo tubes becoming capacitated by negative 20%. Main battery and torpedo tube survivability plus 50%. But as I record this video right now, um, torpedo tube survivability is a bit of a hoax and a joke in World of Warships because your torpedo tube health pool um, on your torpedoes in the game is completely up to RNG Jesus. Uh, so you could have one torpedo rack with 370 hit points. So if you're wondering why a torpedo rack goes out instantly, well, as soon as the first shot, you're like, what the heck? And then you have another torpedo rack that has 1800 hit points. So it's a bit of a joke right now. So until Wargaming addresses this, they haven't said anything, but it's been this way for some time in the game. So we'll see if they address it or not. So theoretically, you're supposed to build into torpedo tube survivability, but it's completely up to RNG. And then main battery and torpedo tube repair time, if they should become incapacitated, is negative 20%. Um, I don't recommend uh, any of the others, and I won't drag the video out to talk about um, more of those in particular. So if you have a question, just ask. Um, in terms of a standard upgrade, I would recommend the engine room protection. The risk of engine becoming incapacitated and steering gears becoming incapacitated, negative 20%. Engine repair time and steering gears repair time, negative 20%. So you can watch this video and actually our engine and steering gears got knocked out quite regularly because you are a gunboat destroyer, so a lot of people are going to be shooting at you, especially that <laughs> Conqueror Salvo V8. Um, so that's really why engine room protection is much more important than damage control system modification one. Otherwise, uh, if I want to invest the coal, my primary pick if you have coal, I would suggest is the engine boost uh, modification one. Um, this extends your action time by plus 30%. Right now, your only action time is uh, two minutes, 120 seconds. Uh, so then you can be, uh, boost it up to 150 seconds, so two and a half minute engine boost. So it allows you to be able to juke user propulsion going back and forth a bit uh, longer um, than without. So if you have the coal, you can pick it up for 12,750 coal with coupon. Um, without coupon, it's 17,000 coal. So just keep that in mind. And da, 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 da. third slot, uh, I recommend the aiming systems modification one. This is reducing your main battery shell dispersion horizontally and vertically, where without you have a slightly worse maximum horizontal dispersion and maximum vertical dispersion. Your maximum horizontal dispersion um, is 94 meters and your maximum vertical dispersion is 56 meters. Um, if I remember that correctly off the top of my head from yesterday's discussion in future in the Havrosk. Um, so I like to build into that. So with the full accuracy build here, and if you did a full build uh, accuracy build on Marceau, you're actually still slightly more accurate than just barely, if you can tell the difference, you're slightly more accurate than the Marceau um, in the Havrosk. Uh, your gun turret traverse is uh, 10.3 seconds, so it's not the best, but I don't feel the need to build into that uh, in terms of the upgrade because I'd rather just have more accurate guns. Uh, and also your torpedo tubes traverse speed gets a slight little bonus of plus 20%. Four slot, um, this is really up to you. The two main options are going to be Propulsion Modification 1 or Steering Gears Modification 1. Okay, so Propulsion Modification 1, uh, time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 
I like this because I can, when I'm utilizing the engine boost as well, uh, I can just go forward and juke salvos uh, a lot easier. Um, and you can saw we were playing with a lot of the enemy teams, uh, enemy team members yesterday, the Marcel, the Smolensk, the Des Moines. Um, we just kept messing with them. Uh, so I like the propulsion for that reason. Now the argument for steering gears modification one on the Havrosk is your maneuverability is abysmally bad. I mean the maneuverability, uh, it's 11.1 second rudder shift time. Okay, let me, um, I don't know, if, I know Delny's better. Yeah, five seconds. <laughs> and uh, Delny replaced Havrosk and because it's more similar to that line going, going from the Kiev to Tashkent. Um, it's just bad. Like if I maybe look at Moscow here, 10.9 seconds. My rudder shift time is worse in the Havarosk than the Moskva. Like, it's that bad. Uh, 760 meter turning radius, uh, 1,000 in Moskva, because Moskva is a pretty long, uh, big ship. Um, so it's abysmally bad. So you can make definitely make an argument to reduce that down to, um, it'd probably be 8 seconds. I think you'd be about eight, maybe 7.9 seconds uh, rudder shift time. So that's up to you. Um, I just like propulsion modification and that's what I built into. Uh, now something we can circle back in onto this when we go into um, next here. I have gone for a concealed build on the Havarosk and really there's two ways you can play Havarosk. You can play a concealed build on the Havarosk as I have um, which gets us to our uh, 7.9 concealment. Otherwise, we're 9.7 concealment uh, if we don't take concealment here and concealment on our commander. Um, so there's an argument to be made. You could drop concealment systems modification one, which means you're going to be more detectable by C. Um, I think it bumps you up to 8.73. Um, if, let's say, we dropped it on uh, here in the fifth slot. Uh, 8.73 uh, by C, something like that and you're gonna you lose that plus five percent dispersion when the enemies are firing upon your ship and then in the fifth slot you pick up the steering gears modification two because here rudder shift time is negative 40 percent versus negative 20 percent uh that we had in the fourth slot so i would definitely make the argument um if you don't want to play the conceal which honestly if we're being honest in yesterday's video um, we only utilized the concealment, but we had an island to draw in close on the enemy Marseille. And then after that, we really didn't need concealment just for the illustrations of that game. So it is very, very, very possible to drop concealment system modification one and pick up steering gears modification two. Now, if you're just beginning trying out Havarosk, maybe you want to go just for the concealment on uh, the fifth, uh, your fifth skill point here, just to get a feel for it. Um, otherwise, easily easy easy to go for the steering gears modification too i kind of like Havarosk. the reason why i've done the conceal build is i like um getting into gunfights with enemy destroyers because of the armor scheme that i just showed you and talked about so that's kind of the main reason why i run concealment to get into those more flanking positions and then begin to open up if you want to do more of the farm uh pure just gunboat build i would say drop concealment system modification one and pick up steering gears modification too, because then your rudder shift is going to be down to something like six sec, uh, six point three four five seconds, maybe almost seven seconds. Uh, it's a lot better. So that's probably something I'm actually going to try out because I feel I do feel comfortable dropping concealment system and then uh, just rocking more of a uh, uh, slightly leaning more to the lighthouse build, but you know, still have concealment on the commander, which we'll talk about. Um, so I would be up for actually testing this out. So maybe I do a video on that soon. So if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments so I don't forget and do it. Um, the other thing I talked about for the tier 10 ship, because this used to be a tech tree ship, uh, you have a unique upgrade available for the Havarosk, and that is the Master Fire Control Director. Um, this does a few things. One, it uh, extends your main battery firing range by plus 10%. So right now our range Come on, it's 13.5. So times 10.5, or plus, sorry, plus 10% uh, means that we're gonna add three, uh, three point, wait, as, 
I am so sorry. Um, I'm still recovering from a little bit of a migraine. Uh, let me just do the math because I, I, I'm overthinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 1.35 because um, I just had to move the decimal over and my brain just was not coordinating at all. It means you can get the accuracy up to or the range up to 14.85 uh, kilometers. So that's actually quite nice, to be honest. You also reduce your main battery reload time by negative 6%. But your consumable action time, it takes an, uh, a nerf, uh, negative 20%. So that means that um, our, all these consumables are not going to last quite as long uh, picking this up. So I'll go ahead and click on it. It takes you into the Research Bureau. If you're a newer player, you're not going to have access to Research Bureau. So you have at least tier ten, tier 5, Tier 10 ships. And thus, Wargaming has changed that now. Um, you can see it's 19,200. Uh, so this is also... Uh, rather possible to do because i mean the guns as i talked about in yesterday's video uh have a really nice shell travel time 900 uh, meters a second is what it should be yeah um so i could you could use more range than what i have currently being that 13.5 um and i would actually like to have more range so there's an option there but let's go ahead and go through the rest of these things and we'll circle back Six slot main battery modification three drops our reload time down and by negative twelve percent, but we take a nerf on our main battery traverse speed by it being negative thirteen percent, um, being that ten point three seconds here. But we have the four point two second reload time with the commander build and the upgrade build uh, we have so far. So this is what I've uh, run. This is a this is a very standard upgrade build um, for most all destroyers in the game, um, except you know torpedo destroyers. We're going for guns. Uh, and then the difference being, you know, we talked about taking the steering gears modification too. Um, and I'll circle back and talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, armament rise, 8% chance of starting fires, which we can bump up to 10%. Uh, I'm sorry, 9%. 10% uh, uh, with the commander skill point. Um, 1900 HE shell damage, 2600 AP shell damage. Um, very good there. Torpedoes, and we've talked about already, um, they're more for yellowing or kiting uh, away from the enemy pushing into you because these are very slow traveling torpedoes, 53 knots, so it takes them a little bit to travel that six kilometer distance. Uh, 0.6 kilometer um, detectability range, and yes, very stealthy torpedoes if you manage to get some hits off. Depth charges, you get a number of charges too, uh, and 10 bombs in a charge, so in total 20 bombs uh, if you use both of the charges with a 40 second reload time and damage 2400 uh, repair a uh, damage control party excuse me action time five seconds cooldown time 40 seconds fairly standard on destroyers in the game and then you get an option between the repair party or the smoke generator now the smoke generator it has action time of 20 seconds and it doesn't last um as it's not lasting as long as say compared to the American destroyers, right? There are two minutes here. It's just 97 seconds. So um, that's the uh, longest smoke screen dispersion time that you have. So um, just over a minute and a half. Uh, cooldown time, 160 seconds. So you get to wait a bit for it to come back down um, and you get three charges. I like running the repair party and I explained a little bit about that in yesterday's Friday highlight. Uh, HP per second, 130, but we can improve that with the India Delta Combat Signal, which I do run, 256. Action time, 20 seconds. Cooldown time, 80 seconds. Three charges. Engine boost, this gets you up to your 48, 49 knots with the serum like flag. Uh, action time, two minutes. Cooldown time, two minutes. Um, you can extend the action time to 150 seconds if you take uh, the engine boost uh, special uh, upgrade here in slot. Two, which if you're going to play, be playing a lot of Havarosk, I definitely would recommend for you to take. Um, other things I run here with the combat signals, uh, I take the ram. We don't want to detonate, um, so that's why this is so good. Um, especially if you're going to make sure you're going to have a lot of ships tend to be firing at you. Uh, we want to cool, the consumables come off cool down that much quicker. And your AA rating, um, these are supposed to be dual purpose guns. And they kind of make a big deal about it and talking about the article. But your AA is blah. 61 AA defense. Uh, so against tier 10 and super CVs, you're going to suck. 
tier eight CVs, you'll do just okay. Um, and that's really all there is to it. You could uh, boost it up slightly though, uh, where we go up to 63, but uh, to me, it's not worth your AA combat signals. All right, going into the commander and we'll talk about um, a little more, more about the build and some options. So what I've done here, and I'm actually probably going to end up changing my Havaros build. Um, and I will talk about that when the time comes. But for now, let me talk about the build that I have. Um, so the standard 10 point build, and because we're dealing with a gunboat here, um, I would say the 10 point build that I'm about to show you applies to pretty much, let's say 95% of scores in the game. Um, but uh, perhaps not so much with the Havrosk as being a gunboat destroyer or, you know, it's a destroyer, but it's actually kind of more of a cruiser. Uh, there's some different things you can do with this ship. Um, so the first definite six point commander I would build into is preventative maintenance. Risk of modules becoming incapacitated, negative 30%. This is your main turrets, torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine becoming incapacitated. So you really want this on Havrosk being a gunboat destroyer. And then you really want last stand. This is a three, uh, three point commander build. Um, this means that your ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering gears incapacitated. Six point commander, pick up survivability expert, add plus 350 for each ship tier. So that's times 10. Um, so that means you're adding over 3,500 hit points in additional, uh, addition to your uh, commander here. So you go from, oh, Derek, you quit making yourself do math, uh, 22,500 to 26,000 um, having the survivability here. Now, I talked about it already, but I've gone for now for the conceal build because I like bullying other destroyers um, because of the armor scheme with that 50 millimeter plating. It means you get away with a lot um, and you trade health uh, quite well <laughs> against enemy destroyers. And as the Marcel player, which I mean, that was just one example um, when you come into more skilled players, they will know a little bit more how to handle it. Um, but it's quite fun to draw in the distance on enemy destroyers, even though the max concealed build is only 7.9. Uh, so something like the Ragnar even has better concealment at uh, 7.5. So this is, I think it's the worst, um, Havrosk has the worst concealment in the game. So players are mixed about building the full concealed build as I've done versus going for something more as a lighthouse build. So this is what I've done for 10 points. Um, this is build option one. I'm going to talk, walk you through right now. Uh, after this, for a 13 point build, I'd recommend picking up Adrenaline Rush. Um, so this means that as you lose health, your main battery, torpedo tubes, uh, AA, secondary, or sorry, your second, you don't have secondaries, and you don't have air strike armament, excuse me. Your main battery and torpedo tubes are reloading faster. And then you get a slight buff to your AA damage, but it's mediocre AA on Havarosk, uh, so not that big of a deal. Um, and then for a 16 point build, you can then go for main battery AA specialist, but actually what I would recommend you do after you go for a 13 point build commander, go for the 17 point build being the main battery and AA expert skill. Um, this, yeah, so this skill, so we've buffed our AA right with this skill and we buffed it with this skill and we still have like a 61 rating. Uh, so it's uh, AA suck is just blah on this ship um, stock. Um, so this, the main reason you take this is to extend your main battery firing range, uh, giving us that 13.5 kilometer gun range. So this is the 17 point build I'd recommend going for. And because this is a, a premium special destroyer, you can run Kuznetsov uh, on uh, this commander as well. Uh, so we could probably even uh, look at that. Uh, let me see what his destroyer skills are, I forget. So yeah, he just has the enhanced uh, consumable specialist. That's really nothing we're not gonna be talking about here uh, with the Havarosk. You're just taking him for the talents. Uh, so then after the 17 point build, I've gone for the 20 point build being the main battery and AA specialist. This is reducing the main battery load time by negative five percent. So we've done as as much things as we can, except taking the unique upgrade in slot five, which gives an additional negative six percent reload. Um, with this build, um, trying to get our reload down as much as possible. 
and a slight buff to our continuous A damage. Um, and then what I would do for the 21 point build, I would go for this. Um, I would say, uh, if you're, let's say you're an okay, you're an average destroyer player, this is probably the build that's gonna benefit you the best. But if you're a more experienced destroyer player, let me give you plan B. Um, and this is actually, I'm going to um, end up, I don't even know if I have, um, let's actually, can I send him to reserve? I don't think I have uh, Kuznetsov trained on anything. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so this is build uh, option B. And this is probably, this is actually where I'm going to convert um, my Havarosk over to, and I'm gonna show you now. So I'm still gonna do the six points. This is this is mandatory, okay, mandatory on the Havarosk. Now what I'm gonna do is after this, I'm not gonna take concealment. I'm gonna go for more lighthouse build. This is a destroyer that's pretty much a cruiser with terrible concealment. Uh, so without, you see, we're at the 8.7 kilometer, um, and that's still with the five point, or the fifth slot uh, concealment. So what I'm going to do after this is um, look at Fearless Brawler. So this reduces your main battery reload time when your ship remains detected by an enemy. Now, in the video yesterday, how much was I detected? Pretty much the entire battle, uh, majority of the battle, over, let's say, 75% um, percent of the game. Uh, I was detected outside when we weren't firing or we were in that gearing uh, slayed smoke screen. Um, so there's actually a lot of use you can get out of your Fearless Brawler um, and quite fun to take. Now the question is, do I wanna take this as my uh, first 10 point um, or do I wanna build into the range first? So I would say in this instance, uh, build into the range first. Uh, so now you can see we get the artillery. Uh, take that away, it's 11.2, okay? Um, and then you build into range 13.5. So that's actually what I'm gonna do for my uh, 10 point uh, skill and then for the 13 point skill then I will go ahead and take a drill and rush because you will be lo losing health you will be able to get that reload time down more um, you know so here, here you can see it's 4.4 seconds um, and then uh, so let's see 10 13 point uh, then the 17 point I would go for the main battery a specialist which drops this down to that 4.2 seconds and then I'm gonna go for Fearless Brawler. Um, so what this is gonna do, let's look at the reload time. 4.2, so I pull up my trusty calculator. Uh, so this means it's gonna shave off 0 0.336 seconds whenever our Fearless Brawler uh, activates. Uh, so if I go 4.2 minus 0 0.336, I'm gonna have a 3.86 uh, second reload time, basically 3.8, uh, 3.9, uh, second reload time when my fearless brawler activates. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna take incoming fire alert. This is just a really good one point skill. Um, I don't really see the need to take these other uh, one point skills because uh, it gives us an idea of when people are firing on us, especially if you just start seeing this light up constantly when ships are firing at you with a greater distance of 4.5 kilometers. That means maybe you need to consider going dark. Okay, so this is the Alternates. This is um, if you're experienced, more experienced destroyer player. This is the build I would recommend. Otherwise, you can go with the first build if you're you're getting the hang of it. You're feeling things out. Um, I would say it's a more comfortable build um, because if you're not experienced destroyer gunboat player and you take this build, you may be a little bit frustrated as you figure it out. So um, give yourself patience. Maybe you try this out in like convoy when there's other game modes if you don't want to do in random battles necessarily. Now the perks with Kuznetsev is the will for victory. Uh, so this activates once per battle when your ship's HP falls below 10%. Yeah, you get a slight buff to your health pool. And then you get the dazzle effect. Um, plus 20% while uh, enemy uh, it's firing at your ship. Um, that lasts for 15 seconds. Um, so very similar to dazzle here, plus 20% for 15 seconds. So it's uh, baked in with the will for victory. Um, so this is nice, it brings you back from the dead uh, a little bit. Um, and that's why I like running him on Kremlin. Then you have emergency reserve. So if you get the first blood, we'll get an additional 
um, repair party and additional engine boost. Um, so you can see I've not taken superintendent um, and I to me that's fine um, because I want to go for more of that max DPM build here with the commander. So our concealment now 8.7 kilometers. Um, you know for fun I don't think I'm gonna build into anything else. Um, I'm debating if I want to go ahead and pick up the engine boost. I'm trying to think about saving that coupon for another ship. And right now, I can't think of one. So we'll go ahead and pick it up. I'll show you what it looks like. So we're getting up to th uh, over 30 minutes on this video, so I need to wrap it up and hit the nail on the head. Um, no. Uh, so. Okay, that. <laughs> Okay, so you can see now 8.7 uh, detectability by C. And then, uh, then you can begin talking about, okay, so then do you want to keep the concealment uh, here or do you just want to uh, go ahead and drop it and take steering gears modification too? So for uh, what I'm going to recommend <laughs> is that uh, for this, um, option two, and I'm just going to mount this one. We're going to try it out. Um, again, this build that I showed you, I showed you the first build with the upgrades in that commander. That's the standard Havaros build that I feel very comfortable with recommending, but this is a more a uh, build that takes a little bit more of building into. Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about in particular here. Yeah, so concealment now is uh, 9.7 uh, and we're still rocking that 13.5 uh, kilometer gun range. So um, even though we've taken the four point skill to build that range, you know, you still uh, struggling a bit uh, in terms of your range overall. Um, so. Uh, when people, you see Halvorosk detected at 9.7, uh, 9.6, 9.5 kilometers away, you know he's forsaken all of his concealment and he's building into what I have done. Uh, he's gone for a max DPM build. Um, and then you can see our rotor shift time drops from that 11.1 .1 to 6.7 seconds. So now we have better rotor shift time than the Moskva. <laughs> or uh, in the Havarosk, it's not the shoe on the other foot. So this is the build. I'll try to do a video on this within the next week or two. Again, if you want to see this alternate build, um, please remind me, tell me in the comments and I'll make it happen. Um, because by the time this video goes up, uh, on Saturday, I'm recording it on Wednesday. I may have spaced it and forgotten about it. So. With that being said, if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you have subscribed, thanks so much. I would appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.